All right, we're going to go ahead here and take a look at how you would find the derivative of inverse sine, okay? Um, which is, you know, an inverse trig function. And this is going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through actually deriving the formula, and then in another video I'll show you, okay, how to apply the formula to various derivatives of inverse sine of, you know, x and other types of things. So again, our goal here is to find the derivative of this. We want to find dy over dx. Now, obviously, you know, up to this point, we haven't learned anything about inverse trig derivatives. We don't know what this is, but we do know how to find um, the derivative of trig functions such as sine, cosine, and so forth. So in this case, specifically sine. And I can use the idea of inverse functions, as I mentioned in a prior video, um, to help me out with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the sine of both sides. So it'll be sine of y is equal to sine of inverse sine of x. And the reason I'm doing this is since sine and inverse sine are inverse functions of each other, they kind of cancel each other out-ish, and this is just going to leave me with x on this side. So I get sine of y is equal to x. So I have an equation that looks a little different, but it's still equal. I did the same thing to both sides. But here's the deal. I can go ahead and take the derivative of this now, because I know how to find the derivative of sine. I'm going to have to use implicit differentiation, since it's not solved explicitly y in terms of x. But that's okay. Implicit differentiation is fine with me. So what I do, first thing, take the derivative of sine of y. Well, derivative of sine of y is just cosine of y. Since I'm using implicit differentiation, since I took the derivative of y, I'll then multiply times dy over dx equals the derivative of x is just 1. Okay. Now my goal, again, back from the top, is to find the derivative of this, dy over dx. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to divide, and I'm going to get dy over dx is equal to 1 over cosine of y, which looks pretty good. It looks like, hey, it looks like I'm, I'm done here. But the problem is, I started with a function y equals something in terms of x. I want to end in terms of x as well. So I need to figure out what does cosine of y equal. So what I'm going to do, actually, is go back to... I mean, you could use your original equation or this equation right here, either one, and I'm going to set up a triangle based off of that, because this relationship right here, sine of y equals x, describes a certain triangle. So it describes a right triangle, and, you know, if you think of it right here, so just for instance, you know, like if you have something like this, sine of pi over 4 is equal to like 1 over square root of 2. The pi over 4 represents an angle in a triangle, and the 1 and square root of 2 represent, you know, the ratio of the side lengths that are opposite, um, you know, over the hypotenuse, okay, for sine. And for other trig functions, it's different ratios. So in this case, this value y right here represents the angle in a triangle. So I'm going to make that an angle in this triangle. That angle is y. The x, I'm going to make that into a ratio, x over 1. So basically, in this case, our angle is y for this function, and sine of, for sine, we know it's equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So this side length over here, I'm going to make x, and I'm going to make the hypotenuse equal to 1. Because then, look at this triangle. For this triangle, sine of y is equal to x over 1, or just x, as we started with. Okay? And the reason why I'm doing that is because now I can use this triangle to figure out what cosine of y is equal to cosine of y is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So in order to get this going, and I don't need this anymore, I, I need to figure out this missing side. So let's for the moment just call it question mark, how about? And I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out that missing side. So it would be question mark squared plus x squared is equal to 1 squared, which is 1. All right, which is the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'm trying to find this question mark side right here. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract x squared from both sides. Minus x squared. I'm going to go ahead and take the square root of both sides. I'm going to get question mark is equal to, now it should technically be plus or minus square root of 1 minus x squared. But since I'm dealing with triangles, side lengths, I know it's a positive value. I can't have a negative value for a side length. So what I found is this question mark, this missing side length right here, is square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, so I can go back and I can I could do this one or two ways. I mean, I could simplify this right now and write it sort of as one over cosine. That's the same thing as secant of y. But let's let's just go ahead and put in uh, what I have for cosine here. So cosine of y is equal to 
adjacent over hypotenuse. Again, cosine of y is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine of y is just equal to square root of 1 minus x squared over 1, or just square root of 1 minus x squared. So instead of writing cosine y, I'm going to write square root of 1 minus x squared. Again, over 1, but I don't have to write over 1. Dividing by 1 doesn't do anything. So this right here is the derivative of inverse sine of x. Okay, we, we are able to use our you know, knowledge of inverse functions, the derivative of sine of y, make a triangle, and find that out. So that's how you derive you know, inverse sine of x. Now for inverse tangent of x or inverse cosine of x, um, you would use the same idea. And I'm not going to go through those, but again, it would be the exact same idea as you would um, do right here.